Hey, this is Kushyar. I've been an entrepreneur and data scientist for the last seven years in Silicon Valley. And before that, I used to be a researcher in cryptography. I published six peer-reviewed papers in cryptography and computational complexity. I wanted to do a video about a new coin today, but with all the craziness and all the crash and drops in the market, everybody's asking questions, what the hell is happening? And I decided to make this video explaining what exactly happened, why it happened, and what we should do about it. Should we sell? Should we buy? Should we do nothing? Let's discuss that. So the first thing that I wanted to talk about is what exactly happened. So let's go to coin market caps and look at uh, what happened. So the uh, the market cap of all the cryptocurrencies today is at 582 billion. This number was at 850 billion at its all-time high. So we have a drop of about 31%, which is a huge number in any other financial format. And if we look at Ethereum price, Ethereum dropped 27% from its all-time high and all-time high and if we look at Bitcoin Bitcoin is down 42% from its all-time high which was close to 19,500 um, so and all the other coins are down too so as I said the entire market is down 31% so while the entire market is down 31% comparing to a few days ago let's go to coinbase and see what happens Overall, what happened if we focus on Ethereum, Ethereum is up close to 10,000% from a year ago. And it's also up 26% from a month ago. So we cannot call this a crash and we cannot call this a bear market. This is more like a drop or a correction. So why did this happen? So the, answer, the short answer is there was no specific one reason for this. And there was definitely no specific one technological reason. The, the main reason was just a bunch of cascading bad news coming from governments and from regulatory bodies of different countries. And the first one was the news from South Korea. The South Korea Ministry of Minister of Justice says maybe we should ban all the cryptocurrencies because there are a lot of money laundering going on and there's also a lot of volatility and speculations. That got a big headline and it caused a big drop in terms of prices. But if you look at that particular news, after he said that, other other ministers of in, in South Korea came in and said, that's not the final decision. Let, let's read this news. So last week, a government minister suggested that the country ban, ban trading in Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. That suggestion was quickly revoked, which with officials saying that less extreme regulation was likely. So the original news that he, the minister, minister of Justice said we have to ban the whole thing, got a big headline. But all the other news that came after that actually corrected that news never got covered. So that was the second news from South Korea. And the third news that came in today, that more than 200,000 people signed petition that we don't want you to shut down exchanges. This is in reaction to the news that came in a month ago about closing uh, Korean exchanges. And in South Korea, when you have 200,000 signatures, the government has to respond in a month. So this is going to go through all the pipelines and nobody knows what's going to happen. So this was the first bad news, which as you see, there is no final decision about South Korea yet. So let's go to the second bad news, which came from United States as Steve Mnuchin, uh, Treasury Secretary the headline was, he said that Bitcoin could be used for money laundry and we have to uh, do something about it, which was a very negative news. But let's actually look at what he actually said. Let's play his video.
it's instead of euros or dollars, you, you have a different currency. There are central banks that are thinking of, instead of issuing cash, phys physical cash, issuing a digital currency. So, I mean, the Fed has contemplated and looked at, I don't think they have any intention of doing this in the near term, you could issue digital dollars. Uh, the Fed and we don't think there's any need for that at this point. So first he says uh, we are thinking about uh, building our own cryptocurrency, which is not a bad or good news. They're just saying we're thinking of building a competitor for Bitcoin. There's a lot of speculation in this, and you know I want to make sure that consumers who are trading this understand the risks, um, because you know I am concerned that consumers could get hurt. So the second thing, this is a big argument that the consumers could get hurt and all the government says the same thing. And I think every sane person agrees that we have to put some guidelines. The average consumer, the retail consumers don't get hurt and everybody should know about the risk of the investment. So that's the second argument. We want to make sure that bad people cannot use these currencies to do bad things. So in the United States, and people may not realize this, under our laws, if you have a wallet to own Bitcoins, that company has the same obligation as a bank to know your customer. So that, that law is called KYC law. The KYC law basically says KYC or know your customers forces businesses, uh, financial institutions to have all the information about their customers so they cannot do money laundry. So that's again another sane and okay point he's making and it's, it is not against cryptocurrency, it's just against uh, money laundering using cryptocurrency which a lot of people who are in this space probably agrees with him. So if you think about this, this got a very negative headline, but it wasn't even a negative news. So the third bad news came out of China. This was actually a week ago that Chinese government said we want to ban uh, crypto miners, basically mainly Bitcoin miners that are very concentrated in China. That's, big, that's mainly because of energy concerns that these miners use subsidize uh, energy and run these businesses and it's, it's not good for the environment, it's not good for the government of China because they're subsidizing all this energy. And overall, if you look at that particular news, it could be good or bad again for cryptocurrency market because First of all, as I talk in my first video, we have to move on from proof of uh, proof of work protocols, which waste all this energy, to proof of stake protocols that they do not have energy based, and all the other protocols like IOTA Tangled, which they're not even based on blockchain. The other thing is this could actually be really good for Bitcoin because one of the main concerns with Bitcoin network is it's becoming very centralized because most of the miners are in China using cheap energy. And this could cause the Bitcoin network to get a spread around the world and that's good for decentralization. So this is the third news. The fourth news that actually Charles Hoskins, some founder of Cardano, who I have a lot of respect for, mentioned here he said basically banking red like this always leads to some uh, something related to banks expect some form of news by the end of the week and as we heard during the week there were some banks that they said they're going to ban cryptocurrency buying using this bank account which is a bad news in general for cryptocurrency but that that was expected for a while so I don't call it a super bad news, but it, it was a bad news. So th these are the, these are four bad news. The fifth uh, news, which sounded like bad news, which is actually very good news, was about BitConnect. BitConnect was a Ponzi scheme and a fraud that a bunch of uh, people were running using blockchain. I'm not even sure they're 
actually used blockchain. It was just a Ponzi scheme with the name of blockchain on it, and it got shut down. And I think everybody in crypto community should be happy about it. Let's, I'll, I'll play a clip of uh, BitConnect conference for you, and you decide if this is about decentralized database technology or this is about something else. Let, let's take a look at this guy's conference. So I let you decide for yourself. This this didn't sound like uh, blockchain or decentralized database technology to me. So and there are a lot of articles about how these guys doing all these Ponzi schemes and pyramid uh, marketing strategies. I don't want to talk about them. I think they they're being shut down is a really really good news for everybody in cryptocurrency. They're these guys, there are a bunch of other guys doing the same thing. I hope they're getting shut down too. So that was the fifth and I think the last bad news that caused this market crash. At the same time, we had all these bad news. We had also some good news that they did not get anywhere close to the bad news coverage. So, for example, we had this news coming today that... U.S. rating agency will issue letter grades on cryptocurrency next week. So this is basically, although it's a centralized uh, point that is going to create cryptocurrencies that are supposed to be decentralized, but this is, I think, good for legitimizing the space. I think it causes people to trust the space more, and at the same time, it causes people like BitConnect and all the other fraud companies not be able to steal uh, cryptocurrency investments from regular and average consumers of this space. So this is a really good news. Another uh, somewhat good news was the news from Redfin that Redfin announced more than 70 people bought houses using Bitcoin in last few months. So that these are some good news that they don't get as much coverage Another reason behind these sharp drops is something called margin trading, which is very common uh, thing in stock trading or cryptocurrency trading. And it's so stupid that I don't even want to talk about it, but I think I have to talk about it because still a lot of people do it. So I'll explain margin trading very quickly. Margin trading is basically when you when you want to trade cryptocurrency or stock market or and you start doing it and you said oh my god i made i put ten thousand dollar and i made hundred today two hundred yesterday and i want to make more and more money and you you get greedy and the bank comes to you or the exchange comes to you and say okay you have only ten thousand dollars but we loan you another thirty thousand dollars so you buy 4x stock uh, or you buy 4x cryptocurrency, you buy four times as much money as you put in the exchange. And the most stupid thing with that is, let's let's look at this chart. Let's say uh, you only trade with your own money. There is no margin trading going on. And you buy Bitcoin at $10,000 day one. Day two, it goes down to $7,000. Day three, 
it goes back to 10,000, then it goes up to 12,000, and then it goes up even higher to 15,000. Now what happens to you is you started with $10,000 and now you have $15,000, so you made a profit of $5,000, which is really good. But what happened if you, if the same thing happened when you do margin trading? You have, so this is the second chart. Second chart is for margin trading. You put, uh, put $10,000 of your money, the same money as previous scenario, but the bank loans you $30,000. So, so far, so good. The first day, you have $40,000 worth of Bitcoin. The second day, price of the Bitcoin comes down to $7,000. So you have four Bitcoins. Now you own, your equity is only $28,000. So you might think, okay, now I'm done. The third day, the price of the Bitcoin goes back to $10,000. I should be back to $40,000 worth of Bitcoin and I should have my original money. And the day four and five, I make more money. But that's not what's happening with margin trading. In day two, when the price goes down to $7,000 and your equity comes to $28,000, the bank is going to sell all your Bitcoins, the bank or the exchange or whatever. I don't want to get into technicality. There are different exchanges with different rules, but this is the nature of what's happening. So the bank is going to sell all your Bitcoins and now you have zero Bitcoin and you owe the bank $2,000 because now you, your equity is $28,000 while you, they give you loan of $30,000. So you're negative to 2000 which is this green area here. And you're, you're gone. So this is one of the main reasons we have this sharp uh, drops because a lot of people apparently do margin trading. And they come into the game and the first big news that come out, they're out. So now that we talked about what happened and why it happened, so the question that I get the most is what should we do now? Should we sell? Should we buy now that it's cheaper? Should we hold or what should we do? I don't want to get too philosophical, but I have to get philosophical a little bit. So when you before answering that question, you have to ask yourself why you started investing in this thing at the beginning. There are two categories of reason. The, the number one category is, okay, my friend put their money in cryptocurrency and they made a lot. I want to do the same thing. And they told me it's good. Or it, it goes up a lot every day and I want to get into it. So if your answer falls into this category, I don't know what to, what to tell you. And the second category of people who came to this market are the people who said, okay, this is a very interesting alternative to all the solutions that we have. We have all the solutions that are all centralized. They're all client server based uh, architecture. And now we have for the first one, a legit, secure, decentralized network that is running for money and for all the other application and it's transparent and open source there is transparent and open source it's trustless it doesn't need any source of trust nobody can monopolize the data the companies like geico like banks like insurance companies social media company they're not they cannot mon monopolize data the data should be shared between all the developers and the users and that can bring more competition and that can bring the better user experience. If you came in for the second reason, nothing has changed since a week ago. Nothing has changed since a week ago. Nothing has changed since a month ago. Nothing has changed a year ago. It's the, it's the, same, it's the same problem and the same solution that we're working on. So I don't know why you should sell or why this drop should change your uh, opinion about anything so let me wrap this up by saying this kind of fluctuations are going to happen we're going to hear more bad news from the banks from uh, government agencies and this is very normal for this market and I am not going to worry this much about uh, the fluctuation or the bad news what I'm worried about 
is the scalability and real world applications and why haven't we got to real world applications and a scalability for past uh, year or so so if we look at the scalability bitcoin is still at seven transaction per second all the suggested solutions like lightning channels or segwit 2x are not implemented ethereum is at 20 transaction per second which is still a very low number if this wants to become a viable solution we need to get to way way bigger number maybe tens of thousands of transactions per second the transaction cost is at 20 dollar for the bitcoin per transaction which is a ridiculous number it has to go way way lower we have to get below one cents per transaction the settlement delay is still at 10 minutes minimum which could go all the way to an hour which is which is a very very bad number we have to bring that number to seconds so the technologies that we need to work on has to be lighting channels proof of stake and tangle and these are the things that we have to work on we have to also work on real world applications like soya coin for a decentralized aws for for bad for decentralized advertising and publishing industry or iota for real world internet of things decentralized transactions if we solve those scalability problems and if we have if we can build real world application i i'm i wouldn't worry about the price at that point because at that point the market cap of entire cryptocurrencies is definitely going to be about 10 trillion dollar that means more than thousand percent growth from where we are so anyway that that was my rant about what happened uh, in past few days if you like this format please comment i don't think this format is as productive as introducing coin or technology but if you liked it please comment so i can uh, build this is easier for me i can do this in an hour so anyway thanks for watching please uh, i'm please follow me i'm kushiar at twitter at youtube at facebook at everywhere and also please join us at decentralized bay on facebook which is our blockchain and decentralization uh, group that we talk about trades we talk about technology we talk about science we read different new papers every week so anyway thank you for watching see you next episode